The subject of this video is eczemers and exaplexes, and we first encountered the idea of an exaplex in discussions of the potential energy surfaces of dexter energy transfer. So in that context, we had an excited molecule that was an energy donor, D star, combining with an acceptor molecule and a collision took place. And when the molecules collided, a new type of structure was formed in which there is a complex of DNA that we might represent as D dot A in the square brackets here that is in an excited state, hence the star right here. This DA star structure is what's known as an exaplex. It's an excited state complex. And the only difference between an exaplex and an eczemer is that in an eczemer, the two molecules involved in the complex are identical. So say we had two copies of the same molecule in a complex that is in an excited state. This is what's known as an eczemer. And exaplexes and eczemers are very common, even in situations when we wouldn't expect the ground state molecules to form a stable complex. So these are not necessarily Lewis acid, Lewis base complexes necessarily. It's very common, for instance, for two apparent Lewis bases, like two aromatic pi systems, to form an eczemer or an exaplex. And this is because photoexcitation alters the electron distribution in the excited state of one of the molecules such that it wants to bind to the other molecule. So in the remainder of this video, we'll see how this works in more detail and explore some examples of exaplexes and eczemers and experimental data associated with these. So the basic idea of exaplex or eczemer formation is that an excited state molecule M star coordinates with a ground state molecule N forming an excited state complex M N star. When M and N are identical, we're looking at an eczemer. When M and N are different, we're looking at an exaplex. An eczemer formation is very common, more common in some cases than we give it credit for. For example, eczemer formation can be involved in photochemical mechanisms in ways that are sometimes unexpected or unpredictable. One of the reasons that exaplex or eczemer formation is common is because the, the excited state M star is often stabilized via its interactions with N through a delocalization of the excitation energy or on a more concrete level, orbital interactions that stabilize the electrons of M star. So here, for example, we see that the higher energy SOMO electron is stabilized through an interaction with the LUMO of ground state N. That stabilization corresponds to an energy lowering in the exaplex relative to the separated molecules. The classic example of examer formation is in pyrene. And what was observed, which led to the proposal that an examer was involved here, is a concentration dependent fluorescence spectrum where a broad featureless absorption at lower energy appears as we increase the concentration of pyrene in the solution. So what we're looking at here is four different solutions of pyrene dissolved in, in heptane at four different concentrations. 5 times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter, 3.1 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter, and 7.0 times 10 to the negative four moles per liter. So A through D, we are increasing the concentration of pyrene in the solution. At the same time, this absorption feature at lower energy is increasing in prominence as we increase that concentration of pyrene. The spikier, we might say, peaks appearing at higher energy are decreasing in intensity. So this direction is actually the direction of increasing pyrene concentration at the spikier peaks at the higher energy. These relatively spiky peaks at high energy were attributed to the plain vanilla monomer fluorescence, the fluorescence of individual pyrene molecules. But the broad features at lower energy were attributed to eczemer emission. So here's a drawing of the pyrene eczemer with the two pi systems interacting across this blue dotted line in an excited state. The entire complex is an excited state. And this broad feature at lower energy was attributed to the emission of a photon to form a ground state pyrene complex. Let's just call that PP just to abbreviate it. And now we're in a ground state, so no more star. A photon is emitted as this occurs, and the broad feature here was attributed to that emission. On the next slide, we'll see how this eczema emission corresponds to these peaks and why it makes sense for two reasons. First of all, it, it makes sense that these are broad and featureless without vibrational structure, without transitions to specific vibrational modes. And it also makes sense that this is at lower energy 
than the monomer emission, for reasons that will become clear on the next slide. To help explain these results, we can make use of a potential energy surface diagram showing formation of the excimer from the separated M and N. So we can use a representative point to follow the course of excimer formation, starting at separated M star and N, and proceeding to the left as M and N approach one another. There is often a slight activation barrier. This is barely noticeable on the potential energy surface, but it's there before we reach formation of the excimer. And the equilibrium structure of the excimer is right here at this point. Now, what's happened between the separated M star and N and the excimer? Well, the most important thing to note is that the energy, the potential energy of the system has decreased. For that reason, the excimer energy is lower than the energy of M star. And so we would expect emission of light from the excimer to be at lower energy than emission from M star. This explains why that excimer peak was at lower energy than the monomer fluorescence on the previous slide. So the monomer fluorescence is shown right here. And pretty simply, we can see that these lines are just longer than this arrow corresponding to emission from the excimer. So that explains kind of half of the story. It doesn't account for the broad nature of the excimer fluorescence peak, which is notable given that the monomer shows significant vibrational structure with different peaks for emission from uh, to different vibrational modes of the ground state, for example. Why doesn't the excimer do that? The reason is that the ground state complex typically is not stable. There is no energy well for the ground state complex of pyrene. After all, it's not really polarized, right? And so a complex of pyrene in which the pi electrons are staring each other in the face is likely to be quite unstable with respect to separation of the monomers. And so there is, we could argue, a continuum of energies here, not discrete vibrational levels, but a continuum of energies with very slight differences in distance between the monomer units. A couple other points of note about excimers and exaplexes. Typically, the enthalpy change associated with excimer formation is negative because of this spreading out of the excitation energy, etc., orbital energy effects that we just saw. However, the entropy change is also negative because we are taking two molecules and making one out of them, essentially. And so the temperature dependence here Excimer formation should be disfavored at relatively high temperatures where the entropy term becomes important. Another important point of note is that time-resolved experiments often show that excimer formation is rate-limited by the rate of diffusion, in other words, the frequency of diffusional encounters between M and N. And that can be shown, for example, through data like this. This is a graph that shows, first of all, excitation of the sample. There was a pulse applied to excite the sample, and that's this curve A right here. B shows the monomer emission, and C shows the excimer emission. And based on the time scale, here we're looking at nanoseconds, it becomes clear that excimer formation is essentially rate limited by the rate of diffusion. That essentially every time an excited state molecule collides with a ground state molecule, excimer formation takes place. That kinetic model fits well with this data that shows very rapid formation of the excimer after the excited state of the monomer is generated. Finally, let's say a few words about classifying exaplexes by structure. We've actually hit on this already in the video on dexter energy transfer, where we distinguished between an exaplex where the excitation energy was localized on the energy donor near the start of the mechanism, quote unquote, and, where, and an exaplex where the excitation energy was localized on the acceptor near the end of the mechanism. We can think of any given exaplex as a superposition of four terms corresponding to four limiting structures or four basis states, as the slide says. We attribute coefficients to each basis state to kind of show the extent of that state in the character of a particular exaplex. So the four limiting states are the following. We've got two molecules inside an exaplex. Here they're called M and Q for the excited state molecule M star and the quencher Q, we have one in which the excitation energy is localized entirely on M star, one in which the excitation energy is localized entirely on Q star, one in which an electron has been transferred from Q to M. This harkens back again to those reductive and oxidative mechanisms for dexter energy transfer. 
and one in which an electron has been transferred from M to Q. Again, reductive or oxidative formation of an exaplex. Now, in an eczemer, where M and Q are identical, it must be the case that A equals negative B and C equals negative D, since these two structures are identical, with M and Q being identical, as are these two. And to ensure the anti-symmetry of the overall wave function, A and B must have opposite sign, and C and D must have opposite sign. And so again, while there's no need to get into computing anything with this necessarily, it's just the conceptual model is important to understand that any given exaplex is some admixture of these four limiting states, and which of the state or states is dominant depends on the particular details of the identity of M and Q. 